everybody, Justin Worden, and you are watching What's New in Electronics. We are here on the floor at IPC Apex in Anaheim. I'm here with Ryan with Interratio Corporation. Man, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for having me here. You know, I think I, people get excited when you and I get to do these interviews, but some people get nervous because, I mean, you talk on a level of AI that it just makes people nervous. And Okay, I'll, 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 I'll definitely keep that in mind. No, no, and, and I, don't, I don't mean to offend you by no means. But what, what oh, not I, at all. What I mean is, like, AI, like, everyone's talking about it. People love it, people hate it. Some people think AI is going to take over the world. And most don't really understand what it's doing, what it's about, how, I, what it really means. Yeah. Exactly, and there's so much more to artificial intelligence than just reading the headlines on CNN or Fox News, right? So let's start by talking about some of the new stuff you guys are doing specifically for this industry. Um, okay, excited to finally market our AI card solution. So AI that can be applied uh, for automated outlier detection across the entire line. We can go from silicon wafer in fab all the way to chip to board assembly, full SMT line, everything, printer, mounter, AI, AXI, even though they're doing their own machine learning, we can track outliers across those lines as well through reflow, everything ICT, out the back door, final box build. So we can do outlier detection across the entire line, um, uh, which is great. Uh, the driver of that is the fact that uh, you, you need to have infrastructure with hyper-contextualized data. Uh, I can get into a little bit more detail on sort of what that means, and I can keep it at a high level, but uh, uh, so excited to have that rolled out. It's been working for over a year. We're just not one of those companies that's going to come in and start hyping something until we know it's accessible, it's deployable, it's not a burden, and it actually provides on IT, and it provides massive value right out the gate. Well, I mean, the pressure's been on you guys a little bit because we're in this place where every machine is spitting out so much data and these manufacturing companies are collecting all this data. But the fact of the matter is they're manufacturing companies. They're not data scientists, so right? True. So they have all this data. They don't know what to do with it. Yeah, so um, you know, I'll just uh, give you my little honor in, inside engineering perspective on this. Uh, the terms like data lake and things like that, they, they bug the heck out of me. Uh, these are things that should have you run to the hills, right? We're manufacturing. Your data is already contextualized. And if it's not, you don't have a system that's actually tying it in. You know, for instance, I've got printer data. How many squeegee strokes? What solder paste was there? How long has it been exposed? You know, all this stuff is digitizable today. And then you can tie that to, hey, which product on which part number, which revision of that board went through at that time with all those variables. So it's hyper-contextualized. The thing about the value that brings is it just cuts out that 90 to 95% plus, and it gets even worse in certain cases, of how much engineers and data scientists have to churn through the data to identify what they call the features, clean the data. There's all sorts of buzz terms like imputation and crazy terms. You know, this is where you're going to burn you know, millions of dollars. You know, luckily, just if $100,000, if you're lucky, hundreds of thousands, but you're going to burn millions just paying people to sit there and clean data. We're manufacturing. That should be zero. That's what we deliver. Um, you know, we have the benefit of having come out of silicon photonics, so really complex semi back end into SMT processes, tracking that. You know, chips today, whole assemblies, they're now being co-packaged optics. So you're dealing with physics and other you know, alignment requirements and testing that are off the charts. That's just gonna grind your data analysis down, slow it down, make it more costly, painful. So, uh, but that doesn't have to be the case. You know, what, one thing that I really enjoy about listening to you talk about this stuff is, you know, you have that data scientist background. So you can take a very complex issue and simplify it to the point where the manufacturer can understand it. And I don't mean to, I'm not saying they're not smart, oh, yeah. but we're all smart at our own good. And like your business is there to manufacture a product. It's not there to source data. So the more time you spend on that, the less money you're making. Now, one thing that I always like talking about you, uh, talking to you about is, you know, it's not so much about sourcing the data and finding the outlier to make sure your product, your, your line is producing at a top rate. There's another aspect of that, and that's protecting the company from making sure a bad product is going out the door. Yeah, uh, exactly, you nailed it. You know, that's the thing, like, you know, outliers, so just capturing that data, processing it, this is too much for people to take on. Example, one of our customers running 80,000 modules for Nissan a day, right? That's a tsunami of data. How do you know that somebody paused and pulled a board out and then put it back in? How do you know when they changed out a reel? So they swapped out run reel when there were only 20 boards left in this 80,000 build. That's an outlier, you need to know that. 
you know, from from a machine perspective, looking at everything looks normal. It's all within spec, but that can actually be an RMA later. Was it old inventory that was pulled? You know, these things. Uh, did somebody, is there a certain operator that's waiving rejects at AOI at a higher rate than others? You know, these subtleties, and then for us, test data is great, right? If you're running functional tests or ICT, you know, everything's in spec. That's great, looks great, but you measure, measure, measure. Oh, this data point jumped up here. Then measure, measure, measure. Oh, another one jumps up there. Why is that moving? What changed upstream to tell you that? We can answer that in seconds, you know? And so that's where you apply AI, which I like to call machine learning, all I call is very fancy algorithms. Well, right? you know, I think the most important thing you just said there was in seconds, right? Because with all this data, you know, you can source it and you probably eventually figure it out and find out that that happened. But yeah. what does that do two weeks later, a month later? What yeah. does that do? Yeah, time is of the essence, yeah. And yeah, if you're, you know, you, as a, yeah, you're scaling, you just, you don't have the labor, the manpower to do it. And the complexity of products is getting higher. Higher quality requirements, reliability. I mean, if you, if you said 20 years ago, hey, we're gonna be at a point where we want zero PPPM deliveries, you know, demanded by the automotive industry, everybody would be like, that's impossible. How are you gonna get there? I mean, we can barely do 100 PPPM, you know, or a thousand, you know, maybe that's a little extreme, but it's kind of, you know, that's what you're dealing with. These, these challenges are becoming so much more acute. Um, and if you're on the industry side where you're dealing with data centers, so a lot of our customers build high performance computing systems and interconnected sub-assemblies for that. Like you are dead in the water if you're not leveraging your data and making sure you're not gonna have these RMAs. Or at worst, best case, if you do have an RMA, you can run this outlier detection in reverse and give yourself the causality very quickly where it will be. By the way, uh, talking about making it accessible for manufacturers, like we understand, I'm a former product and test engineer on the line, you know, SAMA and SMT back in. And so when we develop these type of product solutions, I'm thinking about the end user mind. And as an engineer, there's no way I'm gonna trust some algorithm, just say, hey, here's your problems. You know, I don't care what other companies claim, like no engineer is gonna buy into that unless you put it in context and you say, here's what's the outlier's been detected and here's the data that was the outlier and here's how it compares to all the other population. Standard statistical analysis, every engineer knows, that's what you need to do for a product, that's what we're doing. So it's accessible, it's understood, you don't need to be a data scientist and you can trust it because you're like, okay, yeah, the data's in context, I've got 20 years of experience in a product line. Yep, I know that product, that actually makes sense. I've seen other signatures. I'm sorry, it doesn't matter what you do. I think our brains will always move faster than generalized AI in order to connect the dots really quickly. I've seen chat GPT just fail miserably when you start throwing <laughs> up some heavy math questions. You know, <laughs> that's a great example. I think a lot of people are watching this right now going, that's me. So if that's them, how do they get hold of you? Uh, just reach out to our site, you know, uh, support or, or, yeah, support or sales at intraratio.com. There's actually going to be an engineer on the other side that's going to respond. Uh, we're not a sales-fronted organization. We have sales, by the way, our sales leadership is, is former mechanical engineering out of advanced package technologies. You know, this is what we bring to the table. So, yeah, just reach out and uh, we'll have a real conversation. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Hey, thank you so much.